just, I mean, the opportunity to go play for Canada, that's got to be something that was pretty special. And, and I don't know if a year ago I would have told you that, how, how you would have processed that. Yeah, I probably would have told you that you're crazy back then. But, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the opportunity. It's, it's, it's a great opportunity for myself. I've never been able to represent my country before, so it's an honor to, to be able to wear the Canada crest. You look at it a little bit like a, a playoff situation as far as just playing in some meaningful games, especially when you get into the playoff round of the World Championships? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know the situations yet, what the, the goalie situation looks like yet, how many games I'll be playing over there, but I'm just excited to, to head over there and, and see who the team's going to be. You were one who had some adversity in the, in the month of November, and then since December 4th or 14th have put up fantastic numbers. Oh. I guess how do you how do you look at your season as how you dealt with that adversity and maybe what you learn from it to to avoid that little dip next year? Um, I think there's just a few tweaks here and there. It was more of a mental thing, and I got to to work through those. With Schwartz, I give him a ton of credit for uh, for sticking with me and the work that we were able to do in those uh, five or six weeks. And um, you know, it's it's a stretch that I feel like it's it's a long season. I feel every starting goalie goes through one of those at some point of the year, and mine just happened to go a little bit longer than most. But um, I think it's how you come out of those stretches that that really says a lot. And I think that I came out of those stronger, and and uh, I felt more comfortable and confident going down the stretch than I have in my career. You haven't played this many games in a long, long time. How does your body hold up, and does that change at all? How, uh, how you train your body for next season to be a guy who likely is going to play 60 plus? Uh, my body feels good right now. I'm, I mean, I could have played another 28 in the playoffs if they needed to, but uh, unfortunately, that's not the case this year. Um, I mean, I think that I'll just keep training the same way I've been training and uh, coming into camp, and uh, there won't be as much of a transition period for me next year working with a new team and goalie coach and be more familiar next year to start the season. So hopefully there's no dips like that to start and we're, uh, we hit the ground running. Yeah, the, uh, sorry, Brian. Go ahead, go ahead. the other guys that have preceded you, many of them have stood and done this conversation for four or five years in a row, and it's been the same tale pretty much every year. This is your first year here coming from a successful organization. What have you seen over your season here? And do you see a team that's ready to get out of a perennial low finish like this? Yeah, I think I see a team that's that's ready for a breakout. I mean, from game one until game 82, you can see the strides that this team's made. Um, we weren't always on the, uh, the right side of the outcome like we wanted to be. But I mean, we played a lot more, a uh, lot a lot of good teams. We played them really tough this year. We think we were more competitive. We were losing those 2-1 games in LA and Anaheim um, against really good playoff teams that are Stanley Cup contenders. And um, I think that we're a few pieces away from maybe being uh, being one of those ourselves. Taylor Hall said by the end of the season, Connor was the on-ice leader of the team, which is saying something coming from Taylor Hendricks, referred to his leadership too. What do you see from a leadership standpoint from this 19-year-old? Yeah, I think on the ice, he does everything the right way. He doesn't take shortcuts. He's always the first one up the ice, first guy back on the back check. I mean, he leads by example on and off the ice, just the way he carries himself. I mean, um, there's different ways that you can lead and it doesn't always have to be vocal. And uh, Connor's one of those guys that just leads by example. And I mean, that's the guy that you can follow. This uh, summer's going to be a lot of change strictly because the goaltending equipment. Uh, have you had any talks with the, when you expect to get the new gear and, and how will that impact uh, what you do different? Will he be on the ice more, getting used to it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I haven't ha heard anything about when the gear is supposed to be out, but I think that's going to be a transitional time for all goalies. So uh, I have to schedule a few more on ice sessions this, this summer once, uh, once I get that gear in. And will you do that with Dustin Schwartz, having him right there with you when you do it? Um, I'm going to be at home back in Ancaster working with my goalie coach that I've had there since I was about 12 or 13. So uh, the first part of the summer will be with him, and then I'll probably come back here about a month or so before training camp and uh, work with Schwartz until uh, camp starts. I think so. I mean, it all started with that stretch at the beginning of the year where, um, I mean, mentally, um, there's some stuff that I had to work through. And, um, but I think the biggest part about that is was um, having to sit after some of those games and, and keep thinking about it and keep working. Whereas, uh, you know, sometimes you get that chance to go back in there and atone for the loss the night before and, and get, right, get right back at it. And I think as the season wore on, if I did have an off night and Todd had the confidence to go back with me the next day, um, I was able to bounce back from those games and, and still have the confidence in myself. So um, it started off a little rocky, but 
um, for the most part, I think that uh, um, the season, I felt pretty comfortable and confident after that.